Hi friends, David here from Learn Christmas Lighting and of course, the Dominar X. And we're excited today to talk to you about the new moving head model and effect from X Lights. It's now out into the public. It was developed mostly by Gil Jones, and I'm recording this on the day it came out, April 17th, but I know we'll probably get it out a week or two later on the channel. But this is really exciting if you use moving heads because, well, let's just give you a demo because that's going to give you a much better idea of what's going on. Okay, so this is a new model and with a new effect and what it does you can see here in my model view though that's not as important as the camera is it gives us first and foremost the ability to work with our moving head right on the 2d grid so pan versus tilt so the side to side movement there versus the up and down movement right and we're able to move our moving head using both of them at the same time but there's a lot more we can do too and um, by the way we have the model for the dominar x we've had it done it's now on the download page you can use it uh, we are at this time the only manufacturer of moving heads in the christmas industry to have a model for this new model and it's pretty exciting so all that to say we're going to walk through some of the things the model can do some of the things on how to set it up though you don't really have to do that much if you just use the Dominar X model with the Dominar X and, and how it can make your life easier. So the effect itself is up here. It is the moving head effect. It's different than the DMX effect. Okay. And when you open it up, you first see the position tab. So this is great for static positions. It also gives you fanning on the pan and tilt. So that's really cool. I only have one Dominar set up right now, so it's hard to demonstrate. Maybe I should have set up another one. But fanning allows you to basically point your light at one spot, let's say, and then take your lights and offset them when you have multiple. Okay, now I only have one, so it's not going to do anything. But with multiple, it, it does do that. Okay, next we have pathing. So this is really cool. When you build an effect with a movement, you can now just draw a path. So the paths come like this. It's a pretty typical curve tool where you just draw it out. I think I kind of messed it up there. Um, and there is a way to make it curve as well. Oh my goodness. Um, but let's just say we start with a simple square, right? Simple square up in the sky like so. And then I'm going to hit close or escape. And now my moving head is running that square, just like that. Um, the time offset is also super helpful because when you have multiple heads, it allows you to offset them in time so that, you know, you have moving head one through four or one through eight, any combination, and they're automatically offset so that they don't always do the same thing, but they're slightly different. Uh, really cool stuff. Okay, I know there is a way to do curves, and I admit, was it shift? I admit I'm not, oh yeah, shift, shift and holding down seems to give me the ability to uh, curve it up because I get those nice uh, blue curve guys there ready to go. And then you can see I can make a curve, and it's going to follow a curve, which is going to be a lot of these movements right but you can quickly go ahead and even when it's falling a curve you can tell it hey don't pan or hey don't tilt and you can save these as presets which are a new type of file called a moving head preset file so if you make a shape you like a circle a figure eight something that works well on your display you just save it and you use it again later pretty cool okay uh what else do we have control okay so color's always been a big thing on moving heads. Let me just point this guy in a better place um, because, not that far, because most moving head beam fixtures, which is what people use in this hobby, they're going to use, can be a little touchy at times, they're not going to use a color wheel. They use a fixed color wheel instead of color mixing. So grabbing something on here just doesn't really work all that well, typically, Get, grabbing something on a color wheel. But you might just see, I just grabbed a color here, and it lit up and it went to that color. So that's a really cool thing that this new X-Lights model does. You can use the color picker, and it tries to find the closest color, okay, and light your light up. It 
it does a pretty decent job. What I prefer to do is actually go for, you know, whatever it is I'm looking for because it, it only works so well. And that is, I can just click on my color wheel here and it goes through all the colors on my light. You can see that. Everything matches up and we program these for you for the Domain RX. Um, don't ever buy a moving head from a vendor who doesn't do that for you. They should take better care of you than that. Um, and we do. Next, we have status. Um, that's for developers. But essentially, this is what it does. It allows you to set a color. It allows you to move it. It allows you to set an offset on your movements for multiple fixtures, okay? Let's dive a little bit more into some of that other stuff I talked about and how it works. And then the only thing that I don't love is that the color does light up your moving head. But given that this is X lights, I have my model having the whole effect on it. And then below it, I can put just an on effect. And I believe if I do this, yep, that will override it as it should, because in X lights, things that are lower right render out slower and so now it's just going to go up and snap back down etc so so totally overridable you know i don't love again that it just turns on when you select a color but i also understand why it's in there because or else people would be like hey it's not changing to the color i want it so i get that <laughs> uh, but let's look a little bit at the layout how this works so that you can get a little bit more of an understanding of what to do here so when you bring in a moving head advanced model, obviously, like pretty much anything else in X lights, it's going to be blank, right? We've got our domain our X model here. Um, so first thing is the fixture number. So you've got up to eight fixture numbers, okay? So then when you're here in the sequencer and you're doing some pathing, and where did it go? Maybe it's because I only have one, but it usually shows you a place to select which ones out of the eight you want. Okay, so you can put this on your group and then say, hey, I want one, two, three, and four, whatever. And they offset based on which fixture number you give it. So if you give them one, two, three, and four, they would generally offset by about 25% or um, in the case of something that's 360 degrees, that would be 90, right? Um, we're just going to type that in on the calculator really quick to make sure we're not lying. Yes, so that's very cool. Um, next, you've got, just like before, number of channels, number of presets, which is kind of what the light does when it's not doing anything else. I don't typically use that. Then we're going to have pan and tilt stuff, okay? So range of motion, which way it moves, where the coarse channel is, where the fine channel is. And I see, looks like I might need to fix that. I wasn't concerned about fine when I was building this. Color wheel, the dimmer, okay, the shutter. All of this stuff pretty similar to what was in there before. But you can also work with what it looks like and, and then the common properties. But the, the biggest things in here, I would argue is definitely going ahead and setting up your color so that you have that color wheel with all of your colors matched up and that you spend the time to get the pan and tilt correct, including reversing or turning it upside down or whatever you need to do. Because these controls are really going to make sure that the model, which again, we create for you for the Domain RX, so you don't have to do it yourself. These channels are going to, or these parts of the models are gonna really make it so that when you, what you see in X lights is what you get out on the programming side, okay? But let's talk about other things. So there are limits. So for example, this has a range of motion but it actually allows you to set limits on where it goes. So for example, say I set a tilt limit to zero here and I go back to my sequencer, okay? And then I go ahead and move it around, okay? Now tilt of zero is one of the directions all the way down. And so yeah, it's that forward. So this should be, this position right now should be just like this one, okay, but on the other side, right, towards the back of, of away from the camera. Okay, but I set that limit to a tilt of zero degrees, and boom, it doesn't go past that point or not really very close. I think the reason why it's not straight up right now has to do with the fact that it's a 270 degree position 
a total pan or total tilt on the fixture, but a 360 degree tilt limitation. And so this is huge because then you can go and like this and say, I don't want it to go any lower than this. Well, I figure out, you know, that that's, it looks like it's minus 38. And so let's go instead this time and set the max degrees to 38. Okay, go back into here. If I did that right. Yeah, now it's like in this direction. Oops, I went the other way, huh? Um, but it sets a limit. I clearly did it exactly opposite of what it should be. Oh, that's the max limit. Let's try this one. And it allows you to do things which are awesome, I think, like limiting it from, you know, getting on your neighbor's houses. Really cool stuff. And so obviously this stuff is brand new. It's still a little bit, you know, something we're all getting used to, but... It's very cool that like, for example, I can take this and I should just use this. And it's like, oh, hey, you know, don't tilt past that point. And then on the other end, you know, you can tilt all the way. Um, having that ability to keep your lights from shining into your neighbor's houses uh, when you don't want them to is really, really, really helpful. So I hope uh, this helps you if you're using moving heads in X lights here. We're just gonna do a quick animation. So beautiful. Um, and you can see it's amazing what you can do and how much easier it is than older versions of this setup. Now, between the animation itself and all the limitations I set, the light sure isn't doing much, um, but it's very, very cool what it can do. Just set this guy back so it's not so mad. It's very, very cool what it can do, how it can work, um, how you're able to make it move and, and do whatever you need to do to create a, a really awesome show uh, for your Christmas light display this year. And thankfully, as a new feature, it is out soon enough and early enough that we're able to work with it, thankfully, and, and really get learning and really get using it before it's uh, time to go. So we'll have this model on the site, everything you need for the moving head model of the Dominar X. Thanks you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the Dominar X, all of our other fixtures, pixels, everything we've got, as well as our academy, where we're going to teach you this stuff from A to Z, and we'd love to help you. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.